This is WandaVision. It's a trippy new Marvel series coming to Disney+, Plus. but behind its homage to the sitcoms of yesteryear is something far more sinister, specifically one of the next big villains of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Welcome to Explainiac. I'm Dan Casey, and today we're talking about my theory about the villain behind not only WandaVision, but Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness as well. Now, as any good comic book fan knows, the devil is in the details, in this case, literally. Because I'm of course talking about Mephisto, Marvel's demonic tribute to Faustian legend. I believe that Mephisto is the big bad who's pulling the strings behind the visceral weirdness of WandaVision and whatever multiversal mayhem is gonna happen to necessitate Doctor Strange's intervention. Now this theory doesn't conflict with any previous theories we've explored on this show, such as how WandaVision and or Multiverse of Madness could be used to introduce mutants into the MCU. Rather, I think it bolsters them and makes the canon of the MCU as rich and as bonkers as the comic books themselves by introducing literal devils. During the big game, as all good lawyer-fearing football fans call it, Disney Plus aired a preview for three of its big new Marvel series that are coming to the streaming platform, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, and WandaVision. Now, the WandaVision segment gave us our best look yet at the series, with a confused Wanda Maximoff and a decidedly not-dead Vision living together in sitcom-worthy domestic bliss across multiple ages of televised nuclear families. In a blink-and-you'll-miss-it moment, we see two baby pacifiers pop up into the frame, which most comic book fans quickly clocked as confirmation that Wanda and the Vision's twin boys, Tommy and Billy, will in fact be in the series. Now, those same comic book fans may have also let out a collective woof at this revelation because it's also one of Marvel's darkest storylines. Now, if you don't want to be spoiled about the big twists involving Wanda and the Vision's bouncing baby boys, then you may want to bookmark this video for later and go read the source material. In the meantime, allow me to explain. Scarlet Witch and Vision have been married since 1974 in the giant size Avengers number four. It was weird enough for some people who had questions about Vision's personhood since he's not a human, he's an advanced android called a synthesoid, but 11 years later, things got even weirder. In the double-sized climax, which, nice or gross depending on how you look at it, of 1985's The Vision and Scarlet Witch Maxi series, Steve Englehart, Richard Howell, and Frank Springer introduced the world to Billy and Tommy, the twin sons of the two characters for whom it should have been biologically impossible to reproduce. But look, I don't know, Scarlet Witch has weird chaos magic and hex powers that have always been kind of ill-defined, and weirder things happen in comic books all the time, so no one really questions it. However, the darkest revelations were yet to come. When Wanda and the Vision joined the West Coast Avengers, they moved their family out to LA, and they lived in a bungalow on the Avengers compound that served as the spin-off group's headquarters. When the Vision was kidnapped by their erstwhile teammate Mockingbird and the KGB who were masquerading as S.H.I.E.L.D., which is honestly a story for another episode, Wanda and the other West Coast Avengers went off to rescue him. But something strange happened back at the compound. The nanny who was looking after Tommy and Billy was giving the boys a bath when, all of a sudden, they straight up disappeared. They were just nowhere to be seen, they vanished. And to make matters worse, the Vision had been completely dismantled, leaving behind this array of metallic parts and just like a floppy red skin suit that is just, oh my, it's gonna be like my sleep paralysis demon tonight. But back to those disappearing babies. By the time Wanda got back to the Avengers compound, her missing children were found safe and sound. They're playing in the tub, just happy as a clam. And the panicked nanny was more confused than ever because she saw them vanish. Wanda promptly fired this woman and Hank Pym rebuilt the Vision, who no longer had feelings for Wanda because Wonder Man refused to let the Avengers use his brainwaves to make the Vision's personality matrix for a second time because he's in love with Wanda and it was like kind of a huge bummer. He's like, oh, you, my sex, the sex bot's better than me? A real human man with a uh, mullet? Anyway, now if that weren't bad enough, this same weird disappearing act keeps happening with each subsequent nanny the Scarlet Witch hires to watch over her kids, until it finally all comes to a head in West Coast Avengers number 51 with the arrival of the witch Agatha Harkness, who reveals the real reason the twins keep disappearing is because they're not real. 
Wanda manifested them into being through her powerful chaos magic, but if she ever stops concentrating on her children for a moment, they disappear from reality. It's like the refrigerator light when you close the door, where does it go? Her desire for a nice normal life with the vision to have a family of her own led to her creating twin boys from thin air using her hex powers, except they weren't made from nothing. Another demonic sorcerer named Master Pandemonium, who looks like someone's weird Dragon Ball Z fan art on their DeviantArt page, arrives on the scene and claims that Thomas and William are actually fragments of his soul, which had been torn asunder. As it turns out, they weren't Master Pandemonium soul shards, even though they were pretty convincing when he turned those screaming babies into like weird puppets for his arms. There's just this panel where he's like, I've got baby arms. <laughs> You just gotta see it. Anyway, they were actually pieces of Mephisto's soul. Mephisto, he was the demon who had manipulated Master Pandemonium into doing the legwork to find his own missing soul shards. What a lazy piece of fire and brimstone. Now, doing what she considers a kindness, Agatha Harkness magically puts Wanda to sleep and erases her memory, so she won't even remember that she ever had kids, let alone that they were turned into these awful screaming beef mittens. I know, pretty intense stuff, right? Now, here's where things tie back into WandaVision. Wanda is more powerful than ever. In Infinity War, she dunked on Thanos' army at the Battle of Wakanda and destroyed the Mind Stone with one hand while pushing Thanos back with the other. In an interview with ComicBook.com, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige confessed that Scarlet Witch could have taken Thanos down by herself during Endgame if he hadn't called down an orbital strike on her. She is that damn powerful, and I believe we've only seen the tip of the iceberg as far as her abilities are concerned. But now that the dust is settled, Scarlet Witch is left alone to contend with her grief in a very real and very meaningful way. She may have the Avengers, but those are like colleagues at work. She doesn't have her brother Quicksilver or her lover the Vision. They did not return to the land of the living when everyone else who died stepped through those portals in Endgame. And that could have her feeling more alone than ever. And as I've said before, WandaVision is going to chronicle Wanda's descent into madness and end with fracturing of reality into multiple distinct timelines that we're gonna see play out in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And the Sorcerer Supreme is gonna have to try and heal both the ravaged timelines and Wanda's mind, all while trying to prevent malicious actors from preying on a vulnerable Wanda. Now, who's the most malicious actor in question here? Mephisto. Think about it, the first Doctor Strange gave us a glimpse of powerful demonic entities like Dormammu, so who's to say they couldn't add infernal beings like Mephisto into the mix as well? Mephisto fits in with the MO of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness as we understand it so far as well, because prior to his departure from the film, director Scott Derrickson announced at 2019 San Diego Comic-Con that the Multiverse of Madness would be the first scary MCU movie. He also told IGN previously he wanted to explore Nightmare in a Doctor Strange sequel. While Nightmare is a powerful demon and a master of the subconscious who could frankly make a very compelling villain, using Marvel's resident master of manipulation, Mephisto, would tie this story arc directly back to its comic book roots and introduce one of the most iconic villains in the Marvel Universe into the cinematic canon. So whether Wanda unknowingly steals fragments of Mephisto's soul in her desperate bid for familial normalcy, or she makes an unholy bargain with this devious demon, it lays the groundwork for all manner of supernatural shenanigans that can unfold across both this Disney Plus series and the Doctor Strange sequel. Now, unfortunately, we're not gonna find out for certain until WandaVision premieres on Disney Plus later this year. But in the meantime, tell me, what do you think? Do you think Mephisto's behind all of this? Are they setting up Scarlet Witch for a villainous turn as I've theorized on this show in the past? Let me know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up while you're there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy what you saw, please like and share this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that little notification bell so you never miss a new episode. If you want even more Marvel theories, please check out past episodes of Explainiac right now wherever fine Nerdist content is streamed. And remember, not everything in life can be explained, but for everything else, there's this show.